To the people, um, I didn't think I'd be getting a Vosh raid, especially because I'm starting off the stream by addressing a video I found where Vosh was talking about me, his criticisms that he had about me, as well as some advice that he had. I found it on the Coconut Island website. Vosh did not, as far as I know, upload it onto his main channel. It was uploaded onto a fan channel, and I thought it would be good to address it, especially because for some reason, there is this assumption that I am not capable of taking criticism. I, I think it's it's wrong. Like, I have my guard up a lot of the time, but I'm definitely willing to take criticism. I'm hesitant about where the criticism comes from because not all criticism is good faith, right? So with someone like Vosh, who has been on my side through a lot of really shitty things that have happened to me in the past couple months, I take it more seriously than I would, say, Destiny or someone who is part of Destiny's community. Listen, I like Cuffles. I think she's funny. I like her go-getter attitude. But man, does she get her hands dirty. I mean, she really... It's like she can't resist. She sees people shit-talking her and she has to engage. And she doesn't have enough restraint sometimes. That is what I wanted to talk about. What I wanted to say is that I agree with this. I'm a very impulsive person. That has been something that people have always said about me and something I've always known about myself. And I think it's it's been particularly bad because of all of the harassment towards me in the past couple months, which really puts me on edge. And it makes me less likely to think that people are trying to engage with me in good faith. Because a lot of people do not actually try to engage with me in good faith. They basically only want to engage with me if they think they can turn it into some sort of slap fight. She gets herself into more trouble down the line. I tell you, one of the most valuable skills that I ever learned as a commentator is to not, yeah, exactly, is to genuinely not care what other people had to say about me, like in a fundamental sense, you know? This is how you have to respond to cyberbullying or whatever. I totally agree with this. And it's something that I'm trying to work on in the future. I made the decision that from this point forward, I'm not going to get into conflicts with other content creators. I'm still going to get into conflicts with people like Ben Shapiro or Matt Walsh or Candace Owens or other right wing pundits and commentators who have a lot of power and who actively use the power that they have in order to hurt the trans community. But I think one thing which Vosh might not be completely aware of because it's outside of his lived experiences. So he's probably not really thinking about it. But whenever I get into any conflict at all, my replies get filled with incredibly vitriolic transphobic shit. Like even the comments on this video, for instance, is full of people like saying trans women are not biological women. There's 41% jokes. There's other like transphobic shit in the comments. A lot of the worst parts seem to have been taken down by whoever runs the channel. I don't think that the transphobia, for instance, in the comments of this Vosh fan channel are coming from Vosh's community. I think that the transphobia from the comments in this fan channel are coming from other parts of the internet. And anytime I get into any sort of conflict with another content creator, no matter how mild it is, by the way, this sort of thing happens. It really makes me have to put my guard up and it makes me a bit more hyper vigilant than I would actually like to be. Because with someone like Vosh, if he gets into a conflict with someone, he's just getting the standard bullshit, right? But with me, I get everything that Vosh would get, but then multiply that by a factor of three because I'm trans. And I think that is something that a lot of people are not really factoring in when they're thinking about, like, why does Keffels behave the way she does? When you're a content creator, you know, you choose what you expose yourself to. If if the comments are negative towards you, don't read the comments, you know? No, he's he's completely right. My accounts grew exponentially in the last couple months, and I am now just learning that you cannot read all the comments. It is actively harmful to your mental health 
He does get a lot of harassment, but I agreed that the transphobia makes it worse for you. Oh, absolutely. I know he gets a lot of harassment. He gets an insane amount of harassment. But I think that, for instance, if Vosh was trans, it would be significantly worse. And I, I think that people need to like consider this. When people are like coming at me and are saying, why does Keffels behave this way? I don't think they're realizing how much I have to put my guard up because anytime this sort of conflict happens, I face the brunt of it. I'm still learning. I feel like every day and every week that goes by, I'm learning a bit more on how to properly deal with these sort of situations. Do you feel that Vosh is coming at you here? No, no, not at all. I genuinely do not think that Vosh is a bad person. And I've even defended him in the past because of people trying to say that he is like inherently a transphobic person who wants to hurt trans people, which I don't I don't think that's true at all. He's been incredibly supportive of me in the past couple months, especially through getting doxxed. He was there for me, like reaching out almost every day. And that's not something that I can say for a lot of other people in the commentator sphere. To learn from your mistakes, but let's be real here. Twitter comments, Twitter replies, that's not real criticism. Overwhelmingly, that's just like derision. It's just hatred. We'll see if she calms down. Keffels needs to step back. Clear ahead, make peace with people she was unfair to, then back away from debate stuff. She's stoking the fire herself, and it's frustrating because she has genuine complaints about people platforming her. I wanted to address this specifically because this comment's coming from President Sunday. Keffels honestly needs to step back, clear her head, make peace with people she was unfair to, and then back away and from debate stuff. She's stoking the fire herself and it's frustrating because she has genuine complaints about people platforming her harassers. I absolutely 100% agree with President Sunday's sentiment here, and I am backing away from debate stuff. I think the debate sphere unfortunately, is an incredibly toxic place, and I, I can't engage in it. I think the problem with the debate sphere specifically is that it involves platforming people that you absolutely should not talk to, because if you only talk to people who you somewhat agree with, that's boring content. But getting a leftist and someone who unironically identifies as a fascist in the same room and to duke it out, that's great content. That's incredibly fun to watch. So I get why it's the way that it is. I just don't think it'll ever be a place that I can comfortably be a part of without people coming at me in a really, really bad way. Another thing, specifically with President Sunday, it's a little weird that he specifically is saying this to me or saying this about me because he has an entire playlist of Keffel's drama videos on his YouTube channel. I think it's up to five videos. So I don't understand, like, does he legitimately want to see the best for me or does he want to make content about me? In one of his thumbnails, he uh, made up a fake quote that I said, that I want to destroy people's lives for no reason, which I don't even know how to address that. About people platforming harassers. Yes, I do agree that Keffels has very legitimate concerns that are undermined somewhat by the way in which she expresses them. Um, of course, I don't think that justifies ignoring the concerns, but you know, we all, we all hope for people to do the best. Like, I agree with Vosh here. I think, like, one of the biggest problems was that after the fight that I had with Destiny, I got an intense harassment campaign against me. They, they doxed my mom. They harassed me relentlessly, documenting, like, everything I did online. They doxed several of my Twitch mods. I don't want to name names or go into it because I don't want to give it any more attention. I really want to move on. But needless to say, it was incredibly bad for a period of several months. And the hypervigilance from that situation, it made me lash out at people who I don't think deserved it. For instance, with what happened with Hippy Dippy and Dylan Burns, I do not think that Dylan Burns specifically deserved the treatment that he got from me. I was really upset about platforming people who were friends with the people who helped dox my family. And I let my anger 
get to me. And I aimed it at Dylan because he was the person who hosted that show. I think there was a cascading effect happening where because of all of the terrible things that happened to me over the past couple months, I was so on edge that I ended up taking it out on people who do not deserve it. Dylan is complicit in this shit by helping to create the environment. You can argue that. And I think there's an argument to be made about how the way YouTube algorithms work and Twitter algorithms work, how conflict and drama get amplified more than anything else. I think that's fair. Did Dylan ever apologize? I don't need him to apologize. I said my piece about the situation. I don't want to fight any more other content creators, to be honest. I think banning Xan followers was a bit unnecessary. I don't know what the relationship is between Keffels and Xander Hall. It might have been Keffels just sort of obliquely associated Xander Hall with groups that she didn't like. I don't know if there's a personal dislike. Yeah, Xan, I, I, I suspect there's not a personal dislike. That might have been a, just a, a sort of... Um, a broad shotgun fire. That was chatter misinformation, unfortunately. I never banned Xander Hall from my Twitch channel. To explain what I did, because I thought that it was the best way to create a space for me on Twitch where I could avoid harassment and abuse, was that every single streamer who was an orbiter of Destiny specifically got added to PosadaBot using a script that made it so any of their followers, if they hit the follow button, they instantly got banned. I have since disabled that bot because I think I went overboard with it. I think it's best to just let people say their piece and move on. Was it disabled? PosadaBot is still being used as our moderation bot on this channel, but it's no longer banning people from any channels on Twitch. The bot was too aggressive, and I think the best way to move forward is to just stop fighting people. They'll never escape harassment on here, sorry to say. Yeah, I know. As long as I am on Twitch as a trans person who has a very high profile, and as long as that is a thing, as long as I stay in this position, I'm going to get harassed. It's just gonna happen, and I can accept that. I just need to learn to let it slide off me. She banned Zan's followers. She banned a lot of people's followers. Funnily, she posted on Twitter about debanning debate bro followers, and my community remained untouched because, of course, I have a good relationship with her. So, not really debate bro communities. I imagine more Destiny adjacent communities. Yeah, he got it. It wasn't specifically debate bros. I mean, a lot of them were debate bros, but it wasn't that they were debate bros that made me start banning people. I think one of the problems with all of this is that due to safety concerns, I have not and still am not able to disclose the extent of how bad things got behind the scenes, because if I did that, it would enable harassment against me in the future. I don't know if you're all familiar with what gray rocking is. It's a technique for dealing with abuse where you do not give attention to the people who are abusing you because they thrive off it. They want to see you feel hurt. The best thing that you can do when you are the target of online hate is to just not care. It's basically a Chinese finger trap. If you try and pull really hard, you're never going to get out of it. If you be calm and pull your fingers out slowly, you'll get out of the trap easily. The video was over, but I, I had a lot more to say on this topic. But on the topic of harassment and why I specifically banned all of the Destiny adjacent streamers from the chat and orbiters of Destiny, it was because he was incredibly horrible to me. He and the circles around him, they said and did things that would absolutely... They, it's If he did not have the platform he did and the people surrounding him that he did, he would probably get harassed off the internet for how poorly he behaved. You know how I was saying earlier that whenever I get into a fight online with another content creator, it attracts a lot of transphobic vitriol from outside of their community? Well, the thing is, Destiny is very close with Lauren Southern. And Destiny is also very close with Nick Fuentes. You can argue whether or not they're friends, but the fact that they're on speaking terms and their communities intermingle is very apparent 
to anyone who is paying attention. So getting into a fight with him means that it's alerting fascists and members of the alt-right, big alt-right internet commentators that have hundreds of thousands of people paying attention to them. So anytime a trans person engages with him, those communities follow. I have tried for a long time to just not talk about it, but I think that in this given situation, it's very apt. He's explicitly friends with Lauren Southern. That doesn't surprise me. Destiny encouraged his community to laugh at me for admitting to being taken advantage of by a pedophile when I was a child. He said it was tempting to make 41% jokes about me. And his wife, Melina, liked a Lauren Southern tweet where she said ratios will never make you a woman. And when confronted about it, she basically said that transphobia is acceptable if you don't like someone. She accused me of removing her husband's income Despite the chat logs from Destiny's website show Destiny talking about the reasons for his Twitch ban. None of those reasons mention my name. Like, it, it's literally all just made up. I'm not going to continue banning people from the channel, but anyone who defends that community is someone I do not want to associate with. I'm incredibly suspicious of anyone who associates with that community online because it means that they're willing to ignore a lot of very horrendous shit that absolutely would not be acceptable to any normal human being. And I think like an example of the differences between Vosh's community and Destiny's community was how the situation played out. The day on Twitter where I tweeted like really early in the morning, I'm talking like 3, 4 a.m., that I had to wake my mom up really early to get her to deactivate her social media accounts because people were actively trying to dox both of us and information that could be used to dox us was on her accounts and public. Vosh's response to that was to reach out and ask me if I'm all right. Destiny's response, however, was him retweeting onto his Twitter timeline a reply on that tweet that said, why don't you just ratio the doxers? I think it's really night, or di night and day how you see that situation play out and realize there are there is absolutely no depth that destiny would sink to. The thing is, the people that orbit him think this is acceptable behavior. They take cues from him. They think that this is a good way to behave on social media and it as a person. He was laughing about my family getting doxxed. Keffels, there seriously needs to be more laws defining stochastic harassment, terrorism, doxing should be qualified under that. Yeah, the legal system has not caught up to the 21st century. Cyber law is a woefully underdeveloped field of law. I'm just lucky that I'm Canadian because if I was American, it would have been so much easier for people to dox me and make my life significantly worse than it is. The downside of this, of course, is that I'm Canadian, which is a huge L. Basically, the most recent thing was just coming to the conclusion. You can't stop internet harassment by fighting back because it's fueled by you having a response to it. As weird as that sounds, you literally need to let people harass you because if you're not interesting to harass and don't give them a response, it's not fun. Tips number one and two, if you're not a public figure, do not show your face or say your real legal name. Yeah, no, there's a lot of ways that people are not very safe when it comes to cybersecurity. So many people are so haphazard with the information that they put online. I've seen this happen multiple times. People who use a really old Twitter account that they used to post personal things on for years that they then end up using as an account for advocacy or activism or making content. Because then what inevitably happens is if people get mad at you and want to dig up dirt about you, they'll just start searching through your account. If you have anything in there that can be taken out of context, it absolutely will be taken out of context. What I would suggest to anyone dealing with harassment online is to look up the gray rock method. The gray rock method involves communicating in an uninteresting way when interacting with abusive or manipulative people. The name gray rock refers to how those using this approach become unresponsive, similar to a rock. 
The technique involves avoiding interactions with the abusive person, keeping unavoidable interactions brief, giving short or one-word answers to questions, and communicating in a factual, unemotional way. The aim is to cause the abusive person to lose interest and stop their antagonistic behavior to protect a person's emotional well-being. That's just how you always communicate. It's not how I normally communicate. I'm a very emotional person. I'm a very expressive person. But I'm learning how to do this in the face of bullshit for my self-preservation and being able to move forward with what I'm doing. Thank you everyone for watching this video. If you like this video, make sure to check out the other videos on the channel and like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment to help get the video boosted in the algorithm. This channel would not exist without the kind support of our patrons over on Patreon. I'd like to give them all a shout out. Thank you to all of our $200 patrons, Bob Arctor, Marking14, Avery, and Allison. Thank you so much for your continued generosity. I'd also like to give a special shout out to our $30 patrons, Oren, Kit, Bezmos, Emma Violet, Far Left Shark, and Dizzy. Thank you so much. And I'll see you all again in the next video.